You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. The following podcast is scheduled for one fall. Coming in at 195 pounds from Studio A, he is the reigning, defending, undisputed host of the Ring of Thunder, Sexy Sexy. Thor! You know what, Thunderverse? I am getting really tired of having to come on here and report releases and stuff. But I've got to. And you know, it's never fun, even if it happens like once a year. Like, it's never fun to, you know, talk about or mention people losing their jobs. But it's just something we got to do. But holy shit, this is going to be like the third time in the last few months I'm going to have to do this. Like, oof. So let's get through with it. And all we'll say about it is we definitely hope to see them doing well in whatever they do next. We're not going to say best of luck in future endeavors because WWE has soiled that particular wording. So let's get on with it, shall we? So Breezango, Tyler Breeze and Fandango, Killian Dane, Everrise, Bollywood Boys, Tony Nice, Arya Davari, August Gray, Kurt Stallion, and Marina Shafir. So that essentially guts 205 Live pretty much, and also takes out a, a couple of really entertaining tag teams that made NXT a lot of fun in Everrise and Brizongo. And with Killian Dane, that pretty much kills the or takes out the last remaining member of Sanity because Eric Young left a long time ago, now killing it in Violent by Design. Alexander Wolf left a few weeks ago after Imperium kicked him out, and now Killian Dane. So I guess that I mean, that technically leaves Nikki Cross if you want to go with the NXT version of Sanity because she was part of that. But the three dudes of Sanity who went up to the main roster for a spell back when I first got into it in 2018. So, you know, fond memories there. And I think I even saw them. They were in the one house show that I went to the night before Raw Lanta. And they hadn't been seen on TV in months, so I'm just like... So when I saw them pop up and hear their cool little... I was just like, oh shit, I remember these guys. I think... uh, I think they also had a match during that SmackDown taping I went to that go home before SummerSlam 2018 that I was at, which was my first wrestling show. But yeah, either which way, really hate to see him go. But hopefully the three of them end up like Eric Young and just start killing it like crazy and whatever they do next because Eric Young is definitely killing it in Violent by Design. And I hope all of them end up in good places, hopefully impact in AEW and other promotions just end up that much more badass because of all this extra talent that WWE has been released. I mean, I think eventually I'm just going to end up watching it all anyway, so it's not goodbye, it's see you later. But doing a complete 180 and bringing about some great news... Many, 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 many congratulations to Cody and Brandy Rhodes for the birth of their daughter, Liberty Iris. Just a whole lot of congratulations. I absolutely love it for them. They are absolutely most amazing couple. Definitely relationship slash career slash life goals for me. Just... A wonderful couple. So, once again, congratulations to both of them. 
And of course, I'll use that as a segue to push once again that uh, a week from this Wednesday on the 7th at Road Rager in Miami, Cody and QT Marshall have that South Beach strap match, I believe it's called. And there's also a strap match coming up in WWE that we'll get to that's a lot less awesome. But let's get to some Money in the Bank qualifying matches. Because holy shit, these qualifying matches actually made this like the first episode of Raw that was really good in quite some time. I was like, holy shit. John Morrison, Ricochet, and Riddle all got in and granted... They all got in due to different shenanigans because, of course, it's if there weren't any shenanigans, it wouldn't have been Monday Night Raw. And their opponents that they respectively faced, John Morrison facing Randy Orton, Ricochet and AJ Styles, and Riddle and Drew McIntyre, will face off in a triple threat as the last chance to qualify for Money in the Bank. And after Riddle won... Randy was standing at the other side of the ramp and he, his presence there kind of caused the distraction. And he was just like, I won, Randy, I won. This was after Randy already lost earlier in the episode. And he was just like, come on, bro. And Randy just like completely blew him off. It's like, oh, come on, Randy, don't do that. And there's speculation that after a, a segment where Jinder Mahal was mad about not even getting in a qualifying match, and it was a whole bunch of backstage banter between him and Jeff Hardy and Cedric Alexander. A bunch of random possible story furthering stuff. And there's speculation that Mahal could interfere in said last chance triple threat to prevent Drew McIntyre from getting in. Which could finally lead to McIntyre versus Mahal that we've been waiting on for over a year. And it'll be interesting... If it works out that way, because that's literally how Jinder Mahal versus Roman Reigns happened in Money in the Bank 2018. You know, Jinder was sick of Roman getting chance after chance after chance for the Universal Championship. He didn't want Roman to be in Money in the Bank, so he caused uh, some problems there when Roman faced, I want to say it was Finn Balor to qualify for money in the bank and caused Roman to lose that match with the, which this led to them facing each other at money in the bank and Roman won even without one of the Singh brothers who was in a wheelchair because Roman quote unquote injured him but he got up and pushed Roman into the post just fine and when he tried to do it the second time Roman just braced himself against the post and just hit that man with a Superman punch and or spear so Unfortunately, the Sings were also released because now there were the Bollywood boys. But he's got, oh man, I can't even remember. It was one of the guys who was in Indusher and also another superstar who's from India who was in the superstar spectacle event that happened on the WWE Network a few months back. Oh. <sighs> Fucking forgot their names. Well, I mean, I'm sure I'll eventually remember them when they're consistently on TV. Raw. Then on SmackDown, Big E, de ugh, Big e defeated Apollo Crews to qualify for Money in the Bank. Uh, Apollo is still the Intercontinental Champion, so I wonder if this means that E is going to get another Intercontinental title shot after Money in the Bank. We'll see about that. But also this Friday, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will face off in a Money in the Bank qualifying match in a last man standing match. So this will be the third time in a few months that we get Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, and I have no complaints. Over on the women's side, Raw had two tag team matches to qualify to get the women qualifying for Money in the Bank. And Naomi and Asuka were the first two to qualify. After they defeated Eva Marie and Dewdrop, which is the name of Piper Niven they're going with for now, I guess. Even though when Eva was trying to rem 
remember Piper's name. She was literally mouthing Piper, Piper. And just like, do drop. I'm just like, oof. But then the way Eva Marie and Dewdrop lost the match was Eva was going to tag in, I'm not calling her Dewdrop anymore, Piper Niven. And then Piper just like hopped off the apron and just let Eva get rolled up by Naomi for the one, two, three. So hopefully sooner rather than later, Piper breaks off from Eva Marie and becomes Piper Niven again. Of course, it wouldn't surprise me if they made her have this name because her full sort of like nickname, stage name, whatever you want to call it, is Viper Piper Niven. And she's currently on the same brand as Randy Orton, who's also known as the Viper. So I wonder if that was the reason for the whole dewdrop thing. And if that is the case, um, stop it. We can have a a Viper in the men's division and a Viper in the women's division. It's okay. And then the other women's money in the bank qualifying match was one that was a pleasant surprise to me, at least. Of course, there's people that's just like, eh, stupid. But uh, it was Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler versus the reunited Bliss Cross Applesauce. <sighs> Oh my god, I was so happy to see that. I just like saw that on Instagram at first when they were advertising the show, and I was just like, wait, no, this has to be a fatal four-way, because there's no way they team up Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross again, right? Right? Turns out they did! And it's a very, very, very interesting dynamic, because not only do you have spooky Alexa Bliss... But apparently now Nikki Cross is a superhero. Like literally she's dressed up in blue and yellow with like a butterfly on her chest or whatever. And I mean, hey, I'm not going to knock it. Shane Helms made it work. Molly Holly made it work. Nikki can absolutely have all the potential in the world for it to work. Despite, you know, the same old jackasses who poo-poo anything about that just being like eh. I mean if it's not for you that's fine but don't call it like I'm stupid or something I mean honestly Nikki needed a gimmick change or a heel turn or something because they were just throwing her on main event because she was just like this super happy poppy baby face and all that who's just like really happy even after losing her best friend of over a year. And, I mean, it wasn't getting her any raw TV time. They were, hell, she wasn't even on main event for a while, and then she came back to main event a couple months ago and then started having her little string of wins against Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. So, hey, if this gets Nikki back on TV, that is fine with me. Of course... I'm just wondering if this is going to be a one-off or if this might be the plan for after Money in the Bank. Because unfortunately, as much as I would like it, I don't think Alexa or Nikki is going to win Money in the Bank. I don't even know who. I mean, the SmackDown roster isn't even filled out, so I couldn't possibly guess. I mean, of course, if Nikki did win Money in the Bank, I, I wouldn't hate it. If Alexa won again, I absolutely would not hit that at all. But, huh. <laughs> and if Oscar won Money in the Bank again, I'd have to really see, like, what is Rhea's life condition? Because the last time Oscar won Money in the Bank, it was literally for the Raw Women's Championship. Because Becky Lynch pregnant. But it's just like, huh. After Money in the Bank, if Alexa or Nikki don't win, it's just like, could we, especially because the Raw, or because the women's tag team division is super fucking depleted right now, like, could we have a remix reunion of Bliss Cross Applesauce? But with, of course, Alexa being her little dark sinister self, 
and Nikki being the superhero, but they just have some sort of alliance for, I don't know, whatever reason. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, just think you've got like the sort of evilish kind of anti-hero that could also possibly go straight villain at any point, plus also the super good guy. I mean, that shit's happened in comics like how many times? I mean, might as fucking well, because again, you know, they're they're good for the next few weeks in a program because they're in the Money in the Bank ladder match. But what do you do with them afterwards? Fuck it. Just reunite the team with this new dynamic. That's just what I got for you. And also over on the SmackDown side, we definitely did not do tag team matches. Instead, Sonya Deville is just like, yeah, Carmella, you should, uh, be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And then Liv Morgan was just like, I'm sorry, what? And Sonya was just like, okay, well, Liv, you take on Carmella, and, you know, depending on how you do, I'll take it under consideration. So Liv won again for the second week in a row. So that was pretty nice because, I was, of course, last week I said, I feel like their rubber match is going to be a Money in the Bank qualifying match, and I'm kind of scared that Carmella is going to win that one. But she didn't. Liv won. Hell yeah. Liv is not officially in Money in the Bank yet, but I would just I would be incredibly surprised if she wasn't because I mean who else would take her spot? You've pretty much it's a pretty depleted roster because Bianca Belair is probably gonna be facing Bailey again. Sasha Banks probably isn't coming back till after Money in the Bank. <laughs> Watch Sasha Banks come back this Friday. Now that I've said that, so it's just like Carmella, Liv, Natalia, and Tamina have the tag team championship, and they're feuding with Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke over on Raw. So, I mean, who do you got? So, I think Liv still ends up in this Money in the Bank match, and I guess this was a way to sort of... I guess protect both Liv and Carmella. They're just like, yeah, Carmella, you get in because Sonya wants you in there. But Liv can beat you in a, a match that's not a qualifying match, but kind of a qualifying match for her, more like a prove it match, and she would get in as well. And then you could just play up the Liv Carmella feud more within the confines of the ladder match as well, and then do whatever you want outside of that. So I'm kind of like, Eh, really? At the whole, cir the circumstances of the whole thing, but I'm just like, okay, I mean, I guess I kind of understand. What I don't understand or really care about, and it's no offense to Elias, but Jackson Riker is going to take on Elias in a strap match tonight because Elias has been getting himself counted out and running away and everything from Riker the last few weeks. So that's a thing if you care. Mansoor cared for a second when he asked Riker what he was doing. When Riker was just staring off into nowhere, just slapping himself in the back with a belt. And I think he almost immediately regretted it. And then Mustafa Ali popped up again next to him and gave him some more cryptic advice about building a ladder for success if they won't give you a ladder. And yeah. I mean, that's weird, but I'll be interested to see where it goes. Also, it's official. Kofi Kingston is going to face Bobby Lashley one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank. We formally kicked off this feud slash wrapped up the Hell in a Cell fallout by having the main event be Bobby Lashley versus Xavier Woods in a Hell in a Cell match. So Woods is getting some singles action, and I'm here for it. And it's the first Hell in a Cell match on Raw in like, I don't know, 23, 24, 25 years. And obviously just put here because USA Network was a little miffed that Fox got the Reigns Mysterio Hell in a Cell match on the Go Home SmackDown. It was a wonderful match, and it ended with Woods tapping out and then MVP getting in the cell and locking Kofi out while Lashley was still torturing Woods with the Hurt Lock. 
like, damn, if this was the pay-per-view match instead, you could have actually had two consecutive Hell in a Cell pay-per-views that didn't have a shit ending. I'm not going to get to the Universal Championship just yet and what's happening with that, because that deserves to be the main event of this here Ring of Thunder episode. And as far as the Raw Women's Championship is concerned, Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville disapproved of the way Rhea Ripley held on to the Raw Women's Championship at Hell in a Cell, so they made official a rematch between her and Charlotte at Hell in a Cell. And we've got a few more weeks of build for all that, so I'm I'm just going to assume there's going to be some sort of stipulation in there. And then... F- with the SmackDown Women's Championship, Bailey actually pinned Bianca Belair in a mixed tag match between Bianca and Cesaro versus Bailey and Seth Rollins, and Seth, of course, caused the distraction that opened up Bailey to hit the Rose plan on Bianca and get the one, two, three. And now let's pause for some commercials. We are the Air Station One Podcast, and we approve this message. Hey, I'm Judy, and I've been a listener of Earth Station One for over 10 years. Yeah, every day while Mike edited together over 550 episodes, you know all that geek-themed blah, blah, blah. I've listened so much that now I hear howdy in my sleep. You, too, can enjoy all the Earth Station One fun wherever fine podcasts are found. Okay, Mike, I did this for you. Are we going to get another dog now? The Earth Station One Podcast. Over 10 years for geeks by geeks. My name is Mark McCray, and I'm the author of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives. I'm Dan Klink, co-host of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast. The Best Saturdays of Our Lives features programming trends from the 1966 television season all the way through the last hurrah of the early digital age of the 1990s. On the show, if it's animated, we talk about it. Order your signed copy today at tbsool.com. And listen to the podcast at esonetwork.com and all podcast platforms. Hello. Have you ever wondered how much Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster sold Superman's rights to DC for? Or which uh, popular football star was uh, the Sam Wilson, the Falcons' physical appearance based on? You can find all that and more at the History of Comic Books podcast, a podcast dedicated to the creators, events, history, and the companies that made the great comic book medium. Hosted and created by your friendly neighborhood, J.T. Wheatley. Please listen, give it a listen at iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and all our podcasting platforms. Thank you, and go ahead and enjoy yourself a good comic book. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Amanda Bones. And I'm Ashley. Of How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling, the podcast on the Count Out Wrestling Podcast Network, a weekly show where we talk about all of our favorite things, babes, blood, and brutality. We also talk about other fun things, like is Kenny Omega finally too tan? And how much blood is too much blood? Because that looks like way too much blood. So join us on the adventure of teaching me, Amanda Bones, about wrestling. Look, we gotta talk. Yeah, Thunder Talk. We're going all kinds of sideways with that sweet nerd junk. Woke nerd junk. It's topical. Political. Dare I say radical. We've got all your latest news and reviews. Hot music. And a whole lot of comedy. But it ain't for kids. Definitely mature content. So let's talk. Let's talk Thunder Talk. Thunder Talk is a proud member of the ESO Network. Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly had their respective individual matches before they face each other at the Great American Bash next week, and the show started out with Adam Cole taking on Carmelo Hayes, a newcomer who's had his praises sung by William Regal and Top NXT Brass. Of course, Cole and Hayes had a little promo exchange first in which Hayes just straight up lifted the whole ruthless aggression from Cena's debut. Of course, like Cena's debut, Hayes had a really good outing, but lost, and it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here. Kyle O'Reilly defeated Kushida in a non-title match, because don't forget, Kushida is the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, and I think we can definitely say the NXT part on here now with a little more gusto, now that 205 Live is truly gutted, which bums me out. But yeah, O'Reilly pinned Kushida with the good old roll-up, Then Adam Cole attacked O'Reilly out of nowhere, and the two brawled out of the Capitol Wrestling Center. Kushida was ambushed by three unknown men and beaten down. And the men revealed themselves as Roderick Strong, 
Hideki Suzuki and Tyler Rust still with Malcolm Bivens as his manager. This is the faction known as Diamond Mine that had been teasing the, their debut for weeks in a series of teaser videos. Early plans for Diamond Mine also would have seen Arturo Ruas and Strong's wife Marina Shafir as part of the group, but unfortunately their releases changed all of that. That would have added a shitload of legitimacy to the stable, as Ruas is a jiu-jitsu black belt and Shafir is an accomplished mixed martial artist. This new group, as it currently is, has plenty of potential though, and it's cool to see Roderick Strong step out front and center with a bold new attitude. He kind of fell by the wayside and whimpered out in the destruction of the Undisputed Era, but I guess it was all part of the plan leading to this. Rich Swan and Willie Mack are a tag team again. They'll be facing TJP and Falaba this week on their quest for some tag team gold, and they wished Eddie Edwards and Kojima good luck against Violent by Design, and Eddie said that they'd give them first shot at the titles when they win, but alas... Violent by Design are still your Impact Tag Team Champions. And apparently running on the Freebirds rule, which is any two members of the group can go in and defend the tag titles, not just the two who won the the tag titles, which would have been Rhino and Joe Doring. So gives Dean or something to do. I guess... Eric Young wouldn't, at least for a while, because I believe he's still recovering from an injury, so he's kind of more manager type right here, but he's still very much involved with the group on screen. So yeah, and oh, man, I wonder I wonder if any of them from WWE has ever done the whole Freebirds rule thing, because I know New Day, they, well, I mean, obviously... Now they're separated, but back when it was the three of them all together, like I would think they just, they talk about the process where they choose who, which two of the three men come together to fight for the tag team gold and the, those guys hold the tag team gold and then, and they defend it and all that. So I don't think New Day is ever run by Freebird rules and I'm not really sure of any other faction in WWE that's run by Freebird rules, but if you know, do let me know. Ring of Thunder podcast at gmail.com. Ring of Thunder on the socials. Then the X Division Championship is going to be defended in the first Ultimate X match in well over a year at Slammiversary. It will be Josh Alexander, Ace Austin, Rohit Raju, Chris Bay, PD Williams, and Trey Miguel climbing up to an X that will have the X Division belt hanging in the middle and they have to scale the X all the way to the center and take the title. It's like a ladder match, but I don't think any ladders. Not sure if I'm describing this well at all, but I'm just surprised I remembered everyone involved in this match. Sometimes even when I pay attention to the actual show, I gather my notes for these episodes at the last minute, so sometimes I forget amongst all the other wrestling stuff rattling around in my brain. Jungle Boy finally got his AEW World Championship opportunity he earned at Double or Nothing. The ref banned Jurassic Express and the Good Brothers from ringside almost immediately, and the two had a banger of a match. Of course, Kenny had to gouge Jungle Boy's eyes, and that gave him the opening for the V-Trigger and the One-Winged Angel and the win to remain AEW World Champion. Kenny attacked Jungle Boy after the match, then Christian Cage came down to help Jungle Boy, then Matt Hardy and Private Party came to attack Christian, and then those extremely violent people, the Young Bucks, came out to celebrate with their friend. Yep, and I was sitting there thinking, yep, AEW still has a shitload of post-match brawls, but I don't think I'm mad at it at least. There's also lots of inner circle shenanigans, including Sean Spears hitting Sammy Guevara in the arm with a chair as Sammy was being interviewed by Alex Marvez in the beginning of the show. Conan and Tully, Blan Ugh, Tully Blanchard having a face-to-face -face with Conan bringing out Santana and Ortiz, who turned out to be FTR and FTR attacking Conan because they already beat up Santana and Ortiz. Chris Jericho and Jake Hager attacked MJF, Sean Spears, and Wardlow, and Spears was about to smash Jericho's bad arm with a chair when Sammy Guevara came back to make the save and chase the pinnacle away. Bunch of craziness. 
And as far as the Universal Championship goes, Seth Rollins went to Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville and declared himself ready and deserving for a shot at Roman Reigns. And I was like, yes, please, as soon as possible. And Pearce and Deville were going to take it under consideration. After Jimmy Uso beat Dolph Ziggler to prove he can do his brother's job, Roman and Paul Heyman came out to the ring to address the state of the Universal Championship because he's allegedly beaten everyone when we heard, you think you know me. And the rated R superstar Edge returned for the first time since WrestleMania. He and Roman traded a Superman punch and a spear, and Edge almost hit Roman with a concerto until Jimmy Uso got involved, and Edge speared him through the barricade, and holy fucking shit, pandemonium! The main show ended with Edge in the ring yelling, Where are you, Roman? Even though Roman and Paul were at the other end of the ramp. On Talking Smack, they showed Edge coming back into Gorilla and demanding a one-on-one -on -one with Roman at Money in the Bank for the Universal Championship. Pierce granted it to him immediately, which definitely did not sit right with Seth Rollins, who was a guest on Talking Smack and was witnessing all this, and man, he had a breakdown of rage. Shit's about to get real interesting for some of my favorites over the remainder of the summer, and it wouldn't surprise me if Seth interferes in Roman vs. Edge, then Seth faces Edge while Roman faces Cena at SummerSlam, then we get Roman vs. Seth for Clash of Champions and Extreme Rules, just to run out the main story time till Survivor Series. We shall see. And that's the one, two, three. Thanks for locking up with me in the Ring of Thunder. Kick butts, not nuts. Welcome to Dr. Geek's Laboratory. Hello everyone, Dr. Geek here, with a shout out to all the scientists who worked tirelessly to bring a COVID-19 vaccine into reality. <laughs> Let's face it, creating something of this magnitude is a miracle worthy of Dr. McCoy himself. And now, Dr. Geek needs you to do your part. Remember, each shot is one small step back to normal, one giant leap to putting the pandemic behind us. We can do this. For more information, visit vaccines.gov to find your nearest provider. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping at the T Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.